Um, thanks for the introduction. Uh, I'm Jun Wei Wang. I'm a PhD student uh, at the Crypto Experts. Um, I'm going to talk how to reveal the secret uh, of an obscure red books implementation. Uh, this work is done with my colleague uh, Louis Goubin, Pascal Pierre, and Mathieu Hiwan. Um, this talk consists of uh, four parts. First, we give a brief introduction of wet books crypto, and uh, then we overview a um, wet books contest, and uh, then we have a look at uh, the winning implementation of this contest, um, which is the uh, obscure implementation. And uh, in the last section, we uh, unveil the secrets inside of it. So let's start with the introduction. So wet books crypto protects uh, key extraction from the software implementation of cryptographer pr primitives. In this context, uh, a malicious attacker could uh, uh, entirely control the running environment. Specifically, he could uh, arbitrarily pick uh, inputs for the implementation and uh, run as many times as he wants. Uh, he could uh, record uh, all the running and uh, execution information, such as the access to memory, values, addresses. She could also uh, tamper with the implementation, such as injecting faults and uh, uh, altering the control flow. Unfortunately, the current uh, state of art of wet books crypto is there is very few theoretical discussion on it and uh, uh, no probably security construction. Besides, all the practical construction are heuristic and uh, they are vulnerable to uh, some known generator attacks uh, in the recent uh, publications. One of the generic attacks is called DCA, is published, uh, it's uh, talked in the last uh, RWC. Wetbooks Crypto is uh, initially designed for digital right management applications, and but in recent years, uh, mobile payments applications draw more and more attention. Since the leak of uh, academically verified construction and uh, the market keeps increasing, uh, the user tend to adopt homemade solutions. Here, homemade means their security mostly relies on a secret design. So it is therefore interesting to uh, investigate the security, um, uh, security um, strength we can achieve in practice in this contest. Uh, in the middle of 2017, uh, Wet competition was launched by eCrypt CSA as a follow-up event of the Webbooks uh, workshop one year before, affiliated uh, to crypto and chess, and also at the chess 2017 Catch the Flag Challenge. The motivation is to confront uh, breakers and uh, designers in this um, secret design paradigm. So the idea is to invite the um, is to invite uh, the wet books designers to submit uh, their challenge implementing AES 128, and uh, to invite the breaker, breakers to recover the hidden keys in the CSOS code. Um, the participants are not required to disclose uh, their identity, and they are not uh, required to disclose their underlying designing or breaking techniques. The result is that all the 94 submissions were eventually broken. Um, by nearly um, 900 individual bricks, and most of them were, were alive for less than 24 hours. Um, the scoreboard of the challenge is ranked by the surviving time of, of the submissions. Um, the, winning uh, the winning implementation is 777. It is designed by Cryptolux and uh, only broken by two crypto experts. It survives for four weeks, uh, 2.3 times of the second one. Um, from the scoreboard, we can see Cryptolux is not good, only good, good at uh, designing, they are also uh, very good breakers. Uh, three of the top five uh, implementations firstly, were firstly broken by them. So, congratulations to Cryptolux, uh, including Birkhoff and Yudwin, who won the designing um, award, and uh, the breaking uh, prize is uh, for Team Crypto Experts. Uh, which uh, the author of uh, this talk. So let's have a look at uh, the winning implementation. So the ending result shows that this implementation is protected by uh, at least three layer of protections. The innermost layer is uh, included a Boolean circuit uh, with uh, uh, probably some error de detection mechanism. Uh, in the middle, it's uh, a bit slice a bit slicing program with the 
uh, plenty of uh, AS instance running in parallel. And uh, the outermost layer uh, is some uh, classic uh, engineering obfuscation techniques. For example, there is a virtual machine inside of the program to uh, cover up the um, underlying implementation details. All of these three layers of protection makes uh, uh, the source code uh, looks uh, really uh, high uh, obscure. The code uh, makes about 28 uh, megabit and uh, has 2,300 lines. 12 global variables defined inside of it. Two of them takes most of the space. One is a global table used for intermediate computation um, states. And another is uh, the program code, uh, a bad code running, in, running inside of the virtual machine. Uh, more than 1,000 functions uh, are defined. They are very simple, but uh, obfuscated looks like below. Uh, uh, mm, actually, we found that uh, only 200 of the, two, about 200 of them are useful, and uh, they are indexed uh, by uh, an array. Further, um, observation, further uh, investigation shows that uh, uh, they are duplicates of only 20 different functions. They can be divided in several categories, such as bitwise operation, table lookups, and the control flow primitives. So, in, now let's have a look at how do we break it in five steps. So, firstly, we perform a human pre, uh, reverse engineering. Uh, where three sub-steps are taken, um, namely read, uh, readability processing, where we uh, uh, rename all the functions and the uh, variables in an uh, understandable way. Uh, we uh, clean up all the redundancies, and then we remove the uh, virtual machine to obtain a bitwise program, and we further simplify the bitwise program into a Boolean circuit. After that, we transform the Boolean circuit in its single static form and uh, minimize it. Then we perform a deep dependency analysis to uh, extract some uh, structure leakage of this implementation. Finally, we recover the key with, uh, some, uh, with the help of some algebraic analysis. Uh, since there are not too much technical detail of, uh, in the readability processing, we will ignore it uh, in the following discussion. Oh, okay, now let's rock and roll. So, as I mentioned, there is a virtual machine inside of uh, this implementation. Basically, it has a, an interpreter loading instructions from the program bad code and uh, running these instructions. Um, we then decided to simulate uh, the virtual machine, namely while, execu while executing this virtual machine, instead of uh, invoking the interpreted, uh, interpreted instructions, we printed them out, and we obtained a, a bitwise program. It, consi it consists in plenty of loops, and these loops six, uh, um, interpreted for six, four times, and uh, each of them contains a sequence of bitwise operation. So in order to understand how this bitwise program works, we need to know how the global table is used. Um, basically, we have a global table of 2 to 18 elements. Each element is 6, 4-bit length. It can also be viewed as a two-dimensional array of 64 rows and 4,096 uh, columns. Then we uh, have an iteration of the loops. Basically, it cycles for six, four times, as mentioned, and it uh, has a sequence of bitwise operation. Um, the operands and the result are taken and put back to the table. Uh, for example, in the, uh, the highlighted uh, instruction, two variables from the blue and the green shells are taken XOR them and put it back to the orange shell. The iteration works as a follow. When L equals one, we use these three locations. When L equals two, it uses another three locations in the corresponding columns. And the distance between these columns, the respective two, uh, two locations are constant. Uh, be careful, the, the green 
column, it, uh, because it uh, gets back to, to the top of the column, it cycles back to the bottom of the column. This is similar to when we uh, move, from, move L from 2 to 3, and so on and so forth. The loops iterated for six, four times, and uh, all the lo six, four locations in these three columns are used. It is similar to all the other instructions. Generally, if a location is used in the initial iteration, all of six, four locations in this column, uh, in its column, will be used after the loops in a predefined order. And uh, the other columns used in a similar way, but uh, probably starting with in a different row. Note, note that not necessarily every column are used uh, in a bitwise loop. And not necessarily a column uh, a column is only used either for reading or writing. It could be used both for reading and writing. For example, in this bitwise loop, in the JIST instruction, it is used for uh, an operand. In the ith instruction, it's for the place to store their result. We call these loops uh, memory overlapping, and uh, we notice that uh, these uh, loops only implementing swipe values inside of the column. And uh, we, sh we uh, realize that their existence doesn't affect the output of the ciphertext, which means they can be totally removed. So after all of this, we still have a sequence of bitwise loops, but uh, all of them are not overlapping anymore. In the beginning of it is a 6-4 times 6-4 bit slice program, where the first 6-4 first um, is taken from the number of iterations, and uh, the second 6-4 is the word length of the table. Um, and right, at the, right before the end of the program, it, there is a um, a bit combination procedure taking all the outputs of the bit slice program, combining the 64 bits into a Boolean value, into Boolean values. And uh, the ending of the program is a small Boolean circuit, probably it's uh, some error detection mechanism. All these signs indicate that there are 64 times 64 independent AS instance running in parallel. And we found that order number of them are real and uh, identical. The rest uh, instances uh, are implemented with fake hard-coded case, and uh, they are pairwise existence. We select one of the real implementation, we then obtain a Boolean circuit with about 800,000 gates. We verified this Boolean circuit is functionally equivalent to the original program. Now we uh, transform the Boolean circuit into a single static form, which means each intermediate variable is used uh, is only uh, is exactly assigned only once, and uh, all the access to it is after its assignment. Then we try to minimize the circuit in several respects since it's uh, super large. Basically, we detect uh, an intermediate variable over many, many executions. We see whether it's a constant. If so, if it's so, we see it's a constant uh, variable, and uh, we can replace its uh, appearance with this con constant value and uh, pro propagate the, this constant. We also detect uh, whether two intermediate variables are equal to each other with uh, over many, ex many executions. If so, we see they are duplicates, and uh, only one copy of them can be, we can only keep one copy of them. Besides, we try to flip an intermediate variable and to see, to compare the output of the program, whether it match with a normal execution. After many executions, if it's true, we see it used for randomization and it can be replaced by a constant value such as zero. After several rounds of detection and, a minim and a removal, the size of the circuit is halved. Then we decided to do a data dependency analysis of the, cir the minimized circuit. A real way to do it uh, is uh, to plot uh, its uh, data dependency graph. 
um, a data dependency graph means that uh, in, in a data dependency graph, a vertex stands for an variable, and a, a direct, directed edges uh, means that there is a data dependency relation between these two variables. Namely, the ending vertex relies on the starting vertex. However, it's costive to, for us to plot the data dependency graph for the whole circuit. Luckily, we can manage to plot uh, the first, uh, for example, the first 20% of it. But uh, it looks, looks like a mess. We can't figure out anything from that. Then we reduce the number, uh, the, the, the size of the circuit we plot. We plot the first 10% of it. Some structure leakage start to appear. We can see it's uh, symmetric and uh, a symmetric along with the red line. Uh, even though we don't know what is this symmetry is, we know we are in the right direction. And then we plot the first five percentage of the circuit. Now everything is clear. The, 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 the graph is plotted from the center to outside. We can see there is a ball in, in the center and uh, 16 branches come out from it. And they are grouped uh, into four, uh, they, they are divided into four groups by the flicker structures. If you are familiar with AS, obviously you are thinking the branches are the competition for the first round of S books, and the flicker structure is uh, might be uh, might be uh, mixed column competitions. However, the Mr. Central Bar we still don't understand it. It might be used for initial pseudo random generation, which we can't really, which we can't remove. Um, Fortunately, there exists uh, some well-known clustering algorithm how to help us to extract, uh, um, uh, detect and uh, extract uh, the variables in a cluster um, in a very complex network. We apply this uh, clustering algorithm and uh, we extract uh, all the variables for each individual s -box. And uh, we, can, we then identify the outgoing variable of each individual s -box, namely, we uh, extract uh, the variable that's used uh, in the future computation outside of the s -box. So if the cluster algorithm accurately extracts uh, uh, each cluster, then there must uh, exist uh, a deterministic, uh, deterministic uh, decoding function such that uh, the, decoding, the decoding of this outgoing variable uses this function Get, we can get the real ethbooks out, output. We then further make a hypothesis that this decoding function is linear for some fixed uh, coefficients. We then record the computation traces and uh, extract uh, all the outgoing variables for each cluster over t executions with the randomly selected, selected plan text. And for each key guess and the S books out bit, we compute is the hypothesis bit. And we build, a, a, um, we build this linear system of equation, and we claim that it w if our assumption is correct, the system will be always solvable for a correct key guess. And it works. For instance, we have a cluster with uh, about 500 total points inside, and uh, 34 of the, uh, there are 34 outgoing variables. And we uh, record, uh, the execution, uh, uh, record the competition traces and extract the outgoing variable for 50, 50 times. The result shows there are no solution for any incorrect guess. But, there is a, a for the correct guess for each at books out bit, we can solve this linear equation system. The solution for these, uh, uh, the solutions are listed below. Um, where, the, uh, um, where the variables are ordered uh, by their index, we can see only 15 consecutive variables are used in this. Are, you, uh, are, used, are used um, among these uh, 34 outgoing variables. 
And then the decoding function is uh, actually just the modifi multiply these five outgoing variable with this binary matrix. We repeat this procedure for the remaining clusters, and finally we can extract 14 of the 16 subkeys. For the other two keys, we uh, just use uh, brute force, it's super easy and fast. So, until now we uh, recover the key of the implementation. So in summary, there is no realistic uh, solution for wet books crypto, but the industrial demands keep increasing, and uh, this makes uh, the user tends to adopt homemade solutions, which is not a, a classical crypto way to solve problem. The wet books contest was launched by eCrypt CSA to, uh, in, to uh, increase the openness of research on wet books crypto and benchmark the state of the art of uh, constructing and attacking techniques uh, in this secret design paradigm. Frustratingly, everything was broken in the end, but it could be only at the tip of the iceberg. Our novel attack techniques uh, breaks the winning challenge. It illustrates that the resistance uh, against uh, this generic attacks is not, a uh, not a, a sufficient uh, in practice. And our attack could be generalized to uh, attack implementations with higher order encodings, uh, decoding functions. More attacking techniques will be uh, disclosed uh, in a white paper uh, will appear appearing online very soon. Thanks. Hi. Hi. So my question is, there is a uh, large area in cryptography that aims to construct obfuscation constructions, which are generalization of white box cryptography. Mm -hmm. So the state there is still, we have many constructions and we have also attacks, but the nature of the attacks there are more uh, constrained to one specific primitive, which is multilinear maps. And I was wondering whether you are aware of any parallel between your cryptanalysis techniques that that you presented here, and uh, attacks that we have on the algebraic structure of these uh, tools. Because this, these two types of construction seem very different, and obfuscation in general aims to give you some uh, guarantees. Okay, thanks. I indeed, uh, we realize that there is some uh, parallel uh, uh, research on obfuscation, um, especially the theoretical obfuscation, not uh, the engineering one. And uh, indeed, uh, there is an implementation in this contest uh, was used these techniques, which is the... Part of this submission, but this submission uh, was with very weak security parameters of the, and it was a modification of the real construction, so it wasn't bringing all the, because of the efficiency, uh, restrictions for the competitions. So we were aware that we, we knew how to attack the yeah, solution. Yeah, you know that it, there is an implementation that uses I.O., which is the fifth one, but with the, um, uh, deg uh, with the um, how to say, a low degree the parameter, and it's broken by uh, others. And uh, the, uh, I, I want to say, um, what about crypto uh, has different with uh, obfuscation? Of obfuscation is generally to, uh, to obfuscate uh, a program, to make uh, a program in intelligible. But uh, what books is, um, is uh, assumed the attack knowing the algorithm, and uh, the target is to extract the key inside the implementation. Should it's different. There, must be, uh, th there may be some relation between them, but uh, it's different topics. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I have, I have one question. Okay. So your your um, thing is about uh, so you you really you look at this circuit and you get it's AES, yeah. It's like duh. Does this mean that you could actually design have like a whole new area of block cipher design, where you have weird block ciphers that your analysis are not so structured that your analysis wouldn't be able to attack? Um, 
sorry for my English. <laughs> I think, uh, can you repeat your okay, question so, simply? So you, your attack is very much because you see the 16 things of AS. Yeah? yeah. So you could imagine that there are other block ciphers which aren't as, uh, aren't as regular yeah. that would give you would make it much, much harder for you. So this might open up different avenues for block cipher design. Yeah. Yeah, it could be. Okay, something to think about. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. okay, thanks. Speaker again. Thanks.